welcome back to the Heather Mac React. Today we're going through some more Am I the A-hole pose. And don't forget to subscribe because I do this every week, five days a week. Okay, let's get into our first Am I the A-hole pose. I hope you're ready because I'm ready. Let's get into it. I was asked to leave my late mother's house. That's all they have for us. Okay, I should say from the offset that I have no issues with gay people, but until recently, I didn't know anyone who is gay, lesbian, or transgender. I don't understand it myself, but whatever people want to do in their home is their business. Sounds like you do have a little bit of a problem with it, but okay. My mother passed away two years ago and all my siblings reluctantly decided we needed to sell the house. My niece, 30 female, decided she wanted to buy the house with her boyfriend and I was very surprised to see that she was able to afford to do so. She has always struck me as being quite lazy. We were all pleased to be able to keep my late mother's house in the family. She moved into the house with her partner. I'm not sure what the correct terminology is, but her partner sexually identifies as a woman. My niece and her partner have been to Together for some time and he has only been identifying as a woman for about a year my niece claims to be a lesbian i don't understand it because she was straight for some time until her partner became a woman i'm unsure how to ask those questions without being accused of being homophobia <laughs> Of, <laughs> of being homophobia. Also, like I said, I don't have an issue with this under normal circumstances. People can do what they want to do in their own homes, but this is my late mother's house. I expressed my concerns to my younger sister, 58 female, also my niece's aunt, not her mother, who laughed and thought I was being a bit unreasonable, but didn't press the issue too much. She just said I shouldn't express that opinion to my niece. Yes, keep it to yourself. In the week leading up to New Year's, my niece offered to host a family Christmas gathering at the house. In my opinion, it was a very lovely family gathering. My other nieces and nephews, all adults, some of their own children, were also present. However, just after dinner time, I was pulled aside by my, my sister, niece's mother, because I hadn't been referring to my niece's partner correctly. Nobody had corrected me until then. Nobody else really seemed to mind that much, although I was told I was the only person referring to him incorrectly. I have been told explicitly to refer to him in any way so I did not want to stop referring to him in the way I had been for so long my sister was upset with me for not trying to be respectful and I calmly explained my point of view that as we were in my late mother's house we should respect her by calling everyone else by their birth name and do away with all the silliness with labels oh is that your opinion and what makes you think that your opinion is more valid than anyone else's opinion at this point, my niece got involved and asked me to either continue the facade with her partner or leave. My wife and I left shortly after. Now my niece and her mother, my sister, are not speaking to me despite my attempts to reach out. And my younger sister claims I'll be lucky to be invited to my niece's wedding. My wife agrees with me that it's all blown out of proportion. I was calm throughout the situation and found the whole thing quite ridiculous. I should not be denied access to a house that has many important childhood memories simply because I don't understand labels and the LGBT movement, especially considering I do actually respect his decision to do whatever he wants. However, apparently I am not allowed to do whatever I want in the safety of my own childhood home or respect my late mother's memory. Let me, let me just explain something to you. There's just one thing that you need to know. It's not your house. It's not your house. It was your late mother's house and now it is no more. And it doesn't matter that you grew up there because if some stranger bought it, would you be allowed to just burst in and start calling people by the wrong pronouns? I don't think so. You're rude. You're an a-hole. And I don't care what they do in the privacy of their own home. That is their own home. It's not your home. It's not your mom's home anymore. She's dead. It was sold. It's not yours. Y'all, you can go ahead and bring them in. Because this person is arrogant, entitled, ignorant, and an a-hole. Whoo, that one got me. Okay, that one got me. I wanna know what you think in the comments. I'm gonna pull it together for a moment so we can get to the next story. Okay, next, am I the a-hole? Am I the a-hole for having really st strict rules in my wedding? Y'all, I've heard about this one and we have the rules. So we're gonna go through them all, buckle up. 
I apologize for my bad English. Both me, 23 female, and my fiance, 25 male, agree that we should have a lot of rules that are very strict. The reason for that is because although the wedding is very short, it's very important. Me and my fiance told all our families and friends we would be having a lot of rules, and they all assured us they are fine with it. At that time, we hadn't discussed the rules yet, we just knew it would be very strict. Me and my fiance carefully chose the rules, and in total, there was about 30 rules. Some of the rules were women wear pale yellow dresses and men wear black suits, only seafood and vegan food, no cameras or recording, no children below the age of 12. I know these are kind of strict, but I made sure everyone understood that if they can't meet most of these, that they are not welcomed in my wedding. Me and my fiance, fiance also decided we would only invite the closest of closest family and friends, which would be about 70 relatives and friends in the wedding. My fiance worked on finding a nice beach to have our wedding in, and I worked on making every invitation by hand. The invitation cards include every rule. We expected our families to be happy and excited about our wedding, but instead we got a lot of backlash. My mother-in-law was very angry, saying that she didn't have any yellow clothes. My brother-in-law said he doesn't like seafood and is allergic to most vegans' foods. My uncle said his children will be very upset that they can't come, so on and so on. Basically, almost every family member wanted to go against most of the rules, and I didn't know what to do because I didn't want to change the rules, nor did my fiance. Say. Time was running out, so we postponed the wedding, going from one week to two months. Our families were again upset, saying that they already waited long enough for the wedding and said I was in the wrong for call it causing a mess when I could have just reduced the rules and or made them less strict and stupid and that they never even knew it would be that strict. They told me unless they allowed them to do more things freely, then they are not coming and that why would they even follow so many things for a three-hour party? Yeah, you're not that important. <laughs> I tried to explain to them that we are working on it, but they don't stop talking about it even sometimes behind my back. They always make harmful jokes about, and the one time I stand up for myself, they call me pathetic and that it was all me and my fiance's fault. I know I'm probably the a-hole, but I think they are too. Now let's get to the rules. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna read you a rule and let you know if I would have had a rule at my wedding back in 2016. Let's see, the rules in the update that we deleted, that was deleted. One, women wear pale yellow and men wear a black suit. No, I didn't dictate what people could wear. Just please don't wear white, like all white. Two, no children below the age of 12 or 11. Uh, we didn't have any kids in my family or our friends at that time, but I didn't ban kids from the wedding. I didn't really care. Three, only seafood and vegan food. They can bring in their own food, BTW. Uh, yeah, seafood and vegan food is really not fair for a crowd of people. And no, I had a buffet uh, at our venue and it was very nice. And there was uh, chicken and... Was there beef? I don't remember, but there was a lot of things people could choose from and it wasn't strictly seafood or vegan, of course. Four, no cameras. Nope, I didn't say that. Five, no wine, alcohol or stuff like that. Nope, I hired a bartender. Six, don't cut the cake. Nope, we cut the cake. Seven, no drama. There was drama. <laughs> I would have said no drama too, but there was drama. Eight, no proposals or announcements. Okay. That I do agree to. I think that's really rude when people do that. Nine, no plus ones unless we know them. That's not really fair. I didn't say that. 10, no blue jeans. I mean, I don't know people who wear jeans to a wedding, but I also wouldn't really care because I'm only concerned about what me and my husband are wearing. 11, don't ask the bride anything. <laughs> no, I did not make that a rule at my wedding. 12, keep speeches and vows short. No, I did not make that a rule at my wedding. 13, no inappropriate outfits. Don't know what that means, but again, I didn't make that a rule at my wedding. 14, no inappropriate things. I don't know what that means, but yeah, I didn't want an appropriateness at my wedding either, but also we'll accept that one. 15, do not come looking for the bride and groom. I would have made that a rule, but people came looking for us anyway. So, you know, we just rolled with it. 16, no crying. If you do, it's fine. Just wipe them with tissue. Strange, I did not make that a rule. 17, no throwing the bouquet. No, but I definitely threw my bouquet. 18, no screaming, shouting, or yelling. Uh, I mean, my niece, was, oh, you know what? My niece is under 12. She was seven or eight at the time, I think. 
Um, so yeah, she was a kid. She was there. I don't know if she was yelling or screaming, but probably at some point in the, you know, after party, not after party, you know, like reception, uh, 19, no talking during the important bits. I think that's kind of obvious for most people and you don't have to tell them these things, but okay. 20, no surprises. Strange that you have to tell people this, but no, I did not make that a rule at my wedding. 21, no calling. If you do get a call, go somewhere private. Didn't do that either. Okay, 22, do not play loud music. Well, I hired a DJ, so there was loud music. 23, no inappropriate or crazy dancing. I would never dream of making that a rule at my wedding because the more inappropriate and the more crazy, the better. 24, no holding or touching bride's dress or veil. Strange that you're insisting that your closest of closest family and friends don't touch you, but okay. Uh, don't be rude and inappropriate. I agree with that one. 26, you can't leave the wedding unless necessary. I don't know why you think you get to hold these people hostage. No, that was not a rule at my wedding. 27, do not give your invitation to someone else who might want to go. <laughs> Do you really think this is such a hot ticket item? Like, calm down. 28, RSVP. Fair. Please RSVP. It's polite. 29, do not RSVP if you are not sure if you are coming. Okay, fair. Okay, that's the end of the rules. Um, They're just as ridiculous as I thought they were going to be. I only agreed with, what, three, four, like, conditionally? Yeah, this person is nuts. Her and her fiance are definitely the a-holes. Not even really a question. <laughs> I don't know what you think in the comments though. Leave it below. Let's get on to the next story. Am I the a-hole for throwing away the elf on the shelf and ruining Christmas for my kids after my husband's prank? For context, this year was the first time we would try the elf on the shelf with our kids. We have three kids, Lucas nine, Andy eight, and Claire five, where Lucas and Andy are from past relationships. However, Miles, my husband, has accepted Andy as his and so did I with Lucas. Uh, every Christmas is special for Andy. His BD is on his birthday is on December 24th. His dad started a tradition where Santa would have consider would would have consideration with him for being a kid of Christmas. So he feels magical and special. I always try to give him that. Last year I left Santa Claus footsteps, ate a carrot and grass he left for Rudolph, stuff like that. My husband doesn't think it's a good idea. I do all that for him and I'm showing him favoritism. So we should shut it down because of my ex's decision to create a tradition without considering my other kids' feelings. I disagree since I do consider the three of them, but he asked if we could do something else like Elf on the Shelf. I had no problem with it, but I didn't know how that works. He explained to me quickly and said he was the one who offered I let him do it we bought the cute elf my kids named it Bob later my husband explained that they would they should behave and never touch or hold Bob if they didn't want to be naughty at first it was cute to see them spy on Bob try to see it fly each night Andy was the most excited of all I found him one night talking with it asking if Santa still remembered him that is so cute. But my husband took seriously the behave or Bob would be naughty part. Lucas was his first victim after he didn't do his chores. The next day, his face was drawn with Sharpie markers. Then Claire, who touched Bob and her fave onesie, was destroyed. Apparently, Bob had cut some pieces in it while she was sleeping. Miles was having fun, but I could see my kids weren't. I talked to him about we should lower the pranks, but he agreed... He agreed, but wanted to catch Andy since he hadn't break, broken any rules. I told him that Bob's supposed to tell Santa instead of being naughty. We agreed, but he finally... We argued, but he finally agreed. Fast forward, it's Christmas Eve, and in the afternoon, we had some of Andy's friends to celebrate his birthday. So the kids were playing in the backyard, but my husband looked sus. I decided to look for Bob. It was supposed to be in the kitchen, but it wasn't there. I asked Miles where it was, and he told me, no idea. I started getting paranoid, but Andy asked me if we could cut the cake already. I put my best face on and went for it. The cake was in a box, and when Andy opened the box, he starts crying. I take a look, and it's ruined. Bob was covered in all of it, appearing... He had been eating the cake. Half of the cake wasn't there anymore. Miles starts laughing and so does some of the other parents. My blood is boiling and I grab Bob and throw it in the trash. Then I grabbed Miles. We have a terrible argument. He calls me an a-hole for what I did to Bob, that I've ruined it. How are we supposed to keep the magic with our kids if I wasn't supposed to touch Bob? Edit. Hi, everyone. So the responses have been really overwhelming. I'm sorry it took me some time to answer. I was kind of avoiding the post since I was conflicted by the possible outcome. I'm going through your comments so I can answer some of your questions. I'll also explain 
things you all have doubts in common. One, Andy's dad is from Canada. He visits Andy every spring, summer, and on Christmas break. This year he stayed for his job so he isn't an absent parent. Two, after Andy's birthday, I told Miles to get out of the house so he did. He spent Christmas with my in-laws. I stayed with the kids and all of them slept in Andy's room. My kids didn't want to leave his brother alone. The next morning we opened gifts and I made sure that Andy could feel special after what happened on his birthday. So I wrote a note from Bob saying that he is sorry if he scared him and his siblings. He didn't do his job correctly so now he would be flying to the North Pole with Santa. And then he asked if Santa still remembered the kid of Christmas. He did. Santa was really happy to see him. Three, my kids and I are okay. We are sleeping at my parents' house and we would celebrate New Year's Eve here too. Four, yes, Claire was using the onesie while she was sleeping. My husband took the idea out of TikTok and no, Andy did nothing to even be attacked by Bob. Are you kidding me? What the hell did I just read? Did I just read a man child torturing his young children with something that's supposed to be a special part of Christmas? Y'all bring them in. Bring them in. Are you kidding me? What an a-hole. I don't blame you for kicking him out. I don't blame you for leaving the house. Take the kids and leave. Because that man is not a nice person. I don't even... I want to say so many bad things, but I'm on YouTube, so I'm just going to leave it at he's not a good person. <sighs> I need to pull it together because I want to deck this guy, and for legal purposes, that's a joke, but I want to deck him. Mm. Okay, now I'm mad. Now I'm mad. <laughs> Tell me what you think about that one in the comments. Leave it. Please let me know if I'm alone or if any one of y'all are just as upset about this bullcrap. Don't forget we have over 60 Am I the a-hole post up in this playlist right here for you to binge? Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.